There's a new Just Stock G3 edition. I'm gonna take a look. You may or may not know by now that there is a G3 version of the venerable Just Stock speed control. This is a spec racing speed control for the uh, like stock class style racing. But in many parts of the racing world, Just Stock divisions are used for controlling cost a little bit, making racing more simple. And this is the latest generation of the Just Stock Speed Control lineup. It has a couple new features to look at right away. It's got reverse voltage protection and it has built-in power capacitors. For the most part, the rest of it is enhanced tuning features. There's a RPM limiting modes, and we're gonna get into all that, but there she is in all her glory, the all new G3. Comes with the wires pre-installed, and as you can see, there is no capacitor dangling off the speed control, which is a welcome change for many. The capacitors and the reverse voltage protection is all built inside. What else comes in the box? The protection, your best friend in the whole wide world, the instruction manual, some complimentary mounting tape, some double or, or uh, some shrink tubing, your stickers, a couple zip ties. I like to save these boxes, they're handy. But let's take a look at the instruction manual because, well, you'll never look at it again, right? That's why you're watching this video, so that you don't have to do that. But, whoo, look at that bad boy. Does that even fit on the screen? Look at all that information. The big thing that you're going to notice it's different is it has some added settings. The RPM limiting, it has standard handout, unlimited, and then it has all these different RPM tables that go down for limited RPM. And that's for spec racing when you want to have ultimate control over everything, that the speed control actually looks at the RPM of the motor, limits it, instead of having to worry about all the other fun rules class racing. Onboard programming with the set button, that's all explained here, it talks you through how to do that. You can use the LED programming box, you can use the LCD programming box, and you can use the OTA device as well. So you can program the speed control six ways from sideways. It has 13 settings. So if you plug in an old LED programming card and the settings on the, the sticker is not going to match, obviously, because this is a new speed control, just use the chart that's here in your instruction manual and that'll clarify all of that. But the speed control has the standard three-wire harness for your receiver, the on-off uh, switch with the button, and the fan comes pre-installed and included. Now, one thing I want to talk about is a lot of folks hit us up that they, the fans get damaged through RC crashing. The little blades will pop out of here. So a very simple fix is to just get a piece of plastic material, run it from screw to screw, like make a, little, make a simple little cross brace. So make your fan last forever. You can do... A zip side tail. Some of the speed controls, obviously, they come with a fancy fan guard. You could pick one of those up, but you know, to make it real easy on yourself, you can take one of these guys, take these two screws out, drill two holes in the zip tie tail, put the screws back in, and that little uh, cross brace will stop the fan blades from popping out and stop stuff from falling down into your fan as well. So, re real simple. Plugs. A big thing that we talk about all the time is the plugs that you use. I'm a big fan of the AMAS brand XTs because of how easy it is to connect the wire to the material of the plug itself. A lot of the plugs these days, they're kind of too small, like Dean's plugs, Traxxas plugs. They're not really big enough for the higher power stuff. For most of the just stock things, that's not that big of a deal because you're running spec class. But I mean, power is power for the most part. And in some places, spec racing is more serious than anything else. So, you know, kind of pay a little bit of attention to the plugs when you're doing your install and all that. I typically cut my power plugs down to about half the length. You get a lot of wire on modern day speed controls. It's way more than you need for most setups. So don't be scared to shorten up the wire as much as you need. Less is better. Um, when you are soldering plugs, it's important to have a uh, good material, the soldering iron, the solder itself, or solder if you're from the, the far, farther parts of the world. And you wanna make sure that when you get the um, the wire onto the connector that the, the wire itself gets down onto the material and it's not floating in like a pocket or a bubble of solder. That's like my biggest pro tip about soldering. The rest of it on what gear you use solder, I use, I try to find 6040 lead tin solder if I can. It's harder and harder to find these days because of uh, recycling and international shipping and all that fun stuff. But if you can, that's good to use. And then it's always nice if you don't have free pit mats to use like piece of wood, block of wood to solder on top of so that you don't melt your table. The wires are all black. 
so it's pretty confusing you get a little red marker on that one just to keep things organized but it is also marked on the bottom of the case to keep them in order the wires are all pre-soldered with that good high temperature lead free solder so you try to leave these in there if you can but you can re-solder this stuff you just want to make sure that you have a nice hot iron and some flux the iron that i use is usually a large uh, chisel size tip and i try to run it i run this iron cranked almost all the way up so it's anywhere between probably 750 to maybe 850 degrees Fahrenheit. Get the trusty block of wood. We're gonna uh, shorten these wires up a little bit. And I, like I said, I like to do them about half. And if I can, I try to retain the little red piece on the wire, just to always be a reminder of which one's positive. Now the speed control does have the new voltage protection. So if you were to hook it up backwards with the bullet connectors, it's not gonna kill the speed control. And since the power capacitor is built inside, also protected. So this guy comes race ready right out of the box. Just have to add your plugs. I like to use wire strippers instead of the scissors or the cutters so that you can not uh, cut the strands of wires if you can help it. You end up with those little strands poking out everywhere. It's a bad time for everybody. And then I always tin my wires just enough, not too much, is what I always say. You want to get one, I guess, layer of solder onto the wires. And I try to do it where the wire is sideways or, if anything, going downhill so that the, the solder doesn't wick up into the, the wire itself. You don't want... Less solder is better. Solder is kind of a bad conductor. You just use it to hold the wires in place. These guys are marked. There's a little positive and negative on them that you can't see. Or, you know, they're, they're keyed as well. So this side's negative. It's going to be... Oh, look at that. See what I did there? I cut the wrong wire. I shortened up my motor wire instead. Oops. And that would have been devastating. Had I hooked that up, that would have been all sorts of bad. Why? You got to be careful and check things eight times, especially if you're making a video. Stupid. The all black wires strike again. All right. So, and then I like to tin the connector just a little bit as well because... A little bit of solder goes a long way into keeping things nice and tidy. It is that wire. And I kind of push down on the wire so that it gets through the solder and sits on the plug. And I forgot the insulator. These guys come with these nice insulators, but you still got to use them. There we go. Eighth time's the charm. Jeez. If you've never soldered things before, remember eye protection and don't solder with bare feet because when the solder ball falls onto your toe, you'll be sorry. And always work in a well-ventilated area. The fumes that come off this stuff are pretty bad for you and it's not a good time to be breathing in your solder fumes. Snap that guy on and we're good to go. Now, I guess that wire could have been a little bit longer, but for the purposes of this demonstration, we're just going to shorten all three of those the same way and hook up a motor so that we can walk through how all this stuff works. So this is the Bandit 17.5 2-point R. If you have local racetracks that all they care about is the turns of the motor and they do not care about sanctioned rules and all that the bandit is your jam these are w what i uh jokingly call the the cheater motors for spec class racing so those places that they don't have like normal rules and you get to run what you brung type of type of spec classes that's where these guys come into play so that you can get a pre-packaged motor and differentiate it from your your legal motors if you will but it's marked a b and c this guy is also marked A, B, and C. A is next to the positive. C is next to the negative. And what I do with these is I tin the, the little cup area, lay the wire in there, and then there's all that hanging off. I'm going to cut that off when I'm done. I'm double checking that I got the order of the wires right. So, and then I just use the flush cutters, and I go along that, cut that guy off. All right, so that is set up, and we just got to use the sensor harness. Let's use this little short guy. The sensor wires are keyed, so make sure you don't just go jam it in there. You got to make sure that you line the key up 
They only fit, they only work and fit one direction. This would be like a touring car setup, real easy, motors in the middle, speed controls in the center, or even like some of the drag race setups, they don't have much more wire than this these days. Before you do anything with the programming or worry about any of that, you wanna calibrate it to your radio. So I'm gonna grab a radio and a battery. So this is calibration process. Before you do any programming to the speed control using the programmers, you're gonna to wanna to calibrate it first. So we're gonna walk through that now. You hold down the set button, turn the speed control on, starts to beep. You tap the button to set neutral, you apply full throttle, tap the button again to set full throttle, apply full reverse, tap the button, beeps three times, and away you go. That's it. Calibration is completed, and you have basic operation. It's in default settings, so the reverse is not turned on, but you do get brake signal, throttle, and all that. It blinks because it's in blinking mode. That's what Just Stock is. It's all about that blinking mode. Now, if for whatever reason your speed control won't start calibration or it gets stuck through the calibration, um, check below. There's a video called the servo test and that'll walk you through how to troubleshoot that very easily. So next up is using the LCD programming box. This will also work with um, an LED programming card. So if you have an LED programming card from anything else in the lineup, this connects into the programming port the same way and you'll get the numbers to display up here. 1 through 13, which means you need to use the Speed Control's paper instruction manual chart to know what's going on. If you have lost your paper instruction manual, you can get it off the website. Programmer card has a spot that says ESC, it plugs in there, and the other end plugs into the programming port on the Speed Control. If you have an older Just Stock, the Speed Control's RX harness, or the wire that goes into the receiver, actually plugs into the programming box. This new version has a dedicated programming port. Turn the speed control on. My radio is turned on to avoid any fail-safe topics. And you push enter to get in there. It'll start connecting to the speed control and we will walk through what each of these are talking about. So your running mode, if you want to turn on your reverse, which I definitely want, you're gonna change this one. So item cycles you through the available settings, value changes it. We wanna to go to forward, reverse, and brake so that we have those modes. You hit the enter button and it saves it. You have to hit save to save the setting, obviously. Next item is our drag brake for neutral braking is what this is. So that when you let off the throttle, the speed control applies a little brake to the motor. For most track applications, you want a little bit of drag brake so that the car woes down. For a lot of the spec racing stuff, they actually turn that stuff all the way off to, to save any heating. A um, little bit's okay by me for what this is going in. Um, your cutoff voltage is your voltage per cell. And this allows you to really kind of run your batteries all the way empty if you wanted to. You can lower your cutoff voltage so you can get maximum runtime and really sap those batteries out if you need to. For some of the racers, that's okay because they're running stuff so aggressively that the dips in the voltages aren't really when the battery's dead. So they just want to have that a little bit lower so that they don't get mystery shutoffs and stuff like that. Uh, next one up is your punch. This is how linear your throttle is. And for the most part, I always leave this turned all the way up. It goes all the way up to nine and then it comes back around. So if you have good batteries and you like a linear throttle, that's what number nine's for. Anything lower than that is gonna have kind of a, a delay on the throttle a little bit, if you will. So I like that all the way up. Uh, number five is your max brake force. I typically never want full brakes. It kind of is easy way to overheat stuff. But for a lot of the spec racing, you kind of need max brake force because spec motors don't have a ton of braking power in general. So for this setup, I'm going to leave this at 100 and then I'll be able to use my radio's brake adjustment to turn that down as necessary kind of on the fly. Uh, next one up is your max reverse force and it's kind of the same deal. A lot of times folks are really bad using reverse, so turning the reverse force down helps with that. Um, I find that if I don't have it up at least a little bit, that I get not enough reverse to get unstuck sometimes. So I tend to turn that up a little bit. Uh, initial brake and what this is doing is it'll, it's allowing you to, when you first tap the brakes, that's what initial brake is. So you're co coasting along, you tap the brakes, initial brake setting. If you were to have this lower than what your drag brake is, when you go to tap the brakes, the car will kind of accelerate because the brake will get lower. But if you want it to snap off brakes, you can run this a little bit higher. So you can turn that percentage higher than what your drag brake is. And that allows you to have a snappier initial brake response. Clever name, I know. Number eight is your neutral range. This is the dead zone between your throttle and your brake. If your drag brakes are inconsistent, your reverse is inconsistent, you're having a hard time, it feels like sometimes you have drag brakes, sometimes you don't, or sometimes the reverse is real hard to get, increase your neutral range. What it is is the radios have a mechanical pot, and over time that can wear out, and your neutral kind of shift around. This allows you to compensate for jitter and stuff like that. Um, 
Thermal protection, definitely, I always leave that enabled. Motor thermal protection, also enabled. There's no value, it's just on or off, so I like to leave that on. And uh, now the just stock for you backwards transmission folks has motor rotation, so it gives you the offset and all that fun stuff for the timing and allows you to run motors clockwise as forward rotation. That, that That's all new for, for this version of the just stock. Um, number 12, BEC voltage for the high voltage servos, you can turn this up and then this part is your RPM limiting, and we're gonna do a whole nother episode on all that, but basically, the new version of the Just Stock allows you to have limited RPM racing and fixed RPM through the, the, the speed control's brains, which I think is very cool. There's styles for handout hobby wing motors, there's styles for standard hobby wing motors, and then there's a, several different RPMs to pick from. So this will be great for, if the cars are too fast, this gives you a very easy way to slow things down and kind of equalize competition. So I'm excited to, to get into all of that. And then you have your factory restore uh, if you want to restore it back to the default settings. And if you need to know what your default settings are, they're all listed in the instruction manager on the chart. They're the, the highlighted or grayed out settings. But after setting changes, I now have forward and reverse. Fantastic. Glad you made it to the end. Don't forget that you can win free RC stuff. Tune into our podcast. Find us on your favorite podcast service. Just look up RC Stuff Powered by Hobbywing and enter to win. We give away free RC stuff every single episode. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, shoot us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. Thanks for watching, everybody.